Hello, hello, we're here. The voice in the hand is over here on my left. She's made it. She survived her ordeal. She came out of it on top like a champion. I survived. You came out after. Yep, I came out after the fact, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, we're safe and well. It's over and done with. And... We are fine. Didn't go back to sleep, though. Did you go back to sleep? Yeah. Oh, Hannah went to sleep. Wayne and I didn't. We just lay next to each other all night listening to each other. I go, you asleep? No. And then a little while later he'd go, you asleep? No. We did that till the alarm went off. <laughs> so if I start snoring now, you'll know why. I am exhausted. <sighs> Never mind. We are fine. The worst thing is that the guy didn't hurt Hannah, but she was able to, <laughs> she got a couple of good whacks in. <laughs> she just reacted when he threatened her. She just reacted. And Wayne had a little four-litre um, jerry can that he puts fuel in for the chainsaw and stuff like that. And he had it by the front door. And she just reacted. She just picked it up and she gave him two good whacks with that. And he took off. So, but we've sort of got a pretty good, we can identify him or she can identify him. And so, anyway, I think it's a sad um, state of affairs that mm. this has come to society. But never mind. That's what happens. It's over now and we're fine. So, hi Diana, hi Julie, Suzanne, um, Karen T, Leone, Glennis, gosh, Nola, Jess, Kelly, Lorraine, Alicia B. Oh, Alicia, it's freezing here and she's out walking. I so admire you for walking in the dark. See, I wouldn't walk in the dark. Not because I'm afraid of the dark, I just don't like the cold and that would be my excuse to not walk in the dark. I'd get up and go early in the morning, but not at night. Um, Narelle, Lynette. Um, okay. Yep. Katrina, welcome. Oh, Kathy. Um, who else is here? Jenny T, Amy B, Rach, Tiffany Roselli. Oh, is um, Annie's home on yet? Is Annette here yet? No, not yet. Okay, it's Annette's birthday tomorrow, folks. So happy birthday for tomorrow, Annette. When she comes on, she can re-listen to this. Hope you have a lovely, lovely day. So when we finished last Thursday, we were talking about dinner parties and I was going to come up with some ideas for dinner party and then on Thursday we'll, we'll cook them and we'll still do that. But I'd already had this... Um, session planned so dinner party ideas I'll throw in throughout this talk stay tuned or you might miss them but I'll try and put some notes in the bottom too but we will be cooking the some of my ideas anyway for dinner parties on Thursday night so hi Tiffany oh, Jessen head off to Tassie to visit family oh my goodness Oh, Jess, but Jess, you will love, oh, Tassie's just so good. We just absolutely, I'd move there in a heartbeat. They just have to build a bridge so I can drive because it's much faster to drive that distance than it is to sit on that wretched ferry. But anyway, beautiful spot. We absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to get back. So, and Shabby Rose won, Bacchus Marsh. That it's cold over there too. It's freezing here and it's only going to be 11 where I am tomorrow. So Wayne's lit the fire for me, brought in lots of firewood. So uh, yeah, so you're going home, Jess. That's lovely. Karen, um, yeah, mum wasn't having a very good day today, so she was just sort of lying in bed. She just slept most of the time I was there. That's okay. 
I think it's cold everywhere, Margarita. It is absolutely bitter, and I keep looking at the um, weather map and go, <laughs> winter has hit with a vengeance, I think, but never mind. I saw the snow um, up at Mount Buller, which is only about three and a half hours from us, um, and I think, yes, early start to the snow season, yay. But um, it's been a while since I've been skiing, so but never mind. Oh, Michelle, snow on the mountains. I saw on Mount Wellington. I saw snow on TV, yeah. And raining in Swan Hill. Well, is that that's good, though, isn't it, Narelle? I think raining. Port Douglas, really cold. In, oh, my goodness. So we're having um, an early start to winter, aren't we? Okay. I better get back on topic. Otherwise, it's just never going to happen can you feed a family on a budget with just a few ingredients yes you can sorry um yes of course you can um i've been feeding my family of five for between 65 and 80 dollars a week for years and from when the children were little until now they're all grown up my grocery budget hasn't really changed much. We had that couple of years where it was really, really tight for a while. Now it's back up again, but I stick to that same grocery budget. And the secret is buying ingredients, not buying the ready-made products, the ready-made foods. Buy the ingredients and make them. And trust me when I say it doesn't take long because you're making your basic meals, your basic snacks, your basic lunches, your basic savouries, sweets, whatever. You're not doing Master Chef. You're not doing My Kitchen Rules. You're not doing anything out of Vogue Entertaining. You're just doing regular family meals. That's all. So, of course, when you have the right ingredients in your pantry, you can prepare thousands of dishes. Because when you stop and think about it, just about everything we eat has one or two or three or four of the same ingredients as another thing we eat that has the same ingredients as another thing we eat. So when we have those core ingredients in our homes, we can make those dishes. And they're really simple. I aim for quick, easy, tasty and cheap oh and reasonably healthy and I say reasonably healthy because I'm swinging towards the view that there's too many fads too many food fads that are causing too many other problems so I'm just going to eat and feed my family the basic you know the food pyramid and it has changed a little but we're still doing that food pyramid we still have our five veggies a day our two fruits dairy a little bit of protein that's what we do that's what i'm aiming for and i'm trying to do it as naturally naturally being the operative word as possible because when you cook with ingredients you leave out the artificial colors and the artificial flavors and the preservatives and just have the food although hmm, i'll come back to preservatives though because we all go turn our nose up at preservatives but preservatives save lives when it comes to food no but if you've ever had food poisoning you do not want to have really bad food poisoning so preservatives in the right place and the right use are really, really good things. We shouldn't always turn our nose up at them. Okay. Right. Hi, Sam William Scott. Um, Kath is starting to buy bulk custard flour, corn flour, powdered milk in the freezer before. Yes, Kath, I do. Anything dry that comes into our house, any dry goods, so flowers, um, of any kind, pasta, rice, um, noodles, just about anything in a packet, breakfast cereals into the freezer. And um, 
I leave them there these days. I leave them there until I need the freezer space. Then I bring them out or until I need them in the kitchen, then I bring them out. But otherwise, they just stay in the freezer. And if they're well sealed and sealed properly, it's not an issue and they are fine. Okay. 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 So, pardon? Cream of anything to do with salad, coals. Yeah. So is it, um, I haven't seen the sales flies for coals. Now, speaking of that, um, for Victorians, we have not quite right, has Dove roll on deodorants for $1. And the 750 ml bottles of Tresemme shampoo and conditioner for $3 a bottle. So they're stock up prices. So I bought 12 deodorants this morning. So that'll keep us going for a while. And a couple of bottles of shampoo. Okay, now, when you have ingredients, have you lost on the ruler? When you've got your ingredients, you know, I think we all know the old joke about, you know, 101 ways to use mints or 101 ways to eat beans or something. But it doesn't have to be just mints or just beans because there might be the base ingredient, but when you add in other vegetables, you add in um, a grain, you add in some seasonings, they become totally different things because mints will make pie filling. Mints will make pasta sauces. It will do for lasagna. It will do for, um, pot, I said pies, um, rissoles, meatballs, meatloaf, um, sloppy joes, just plain old stew on toast all come from mints. But it's what you add to the mints that makes the meal different. So while I wouldn't, and these days we're blessed that we don't have to eat mints every single meal. If it came to that point that we had to, there are different ways to prepare it so that it's not just mints. And the same goes for chicken, lamb, um, beef. I'm sure we'd get sick of steak every night if we had steak every night, although Wayne probably wouldn't, but, you know, I would. But... They're just base ingredients. So it's how you use them that makes a difference. And that's what helps you stick to your budget. Okay. So now. Our meals are simple. I've said that. And they're pretty quick and easy. I'm not a, a gourmet cook by any means. <laughs> Not have any stretch of the imagination, no. Now, I love cooking Christmas dinner. I love doing special birthday dinners. I love doing special cooking, catering for parties and things because that's different to putting a meal on the table every single night. But we still have to eat every single night. So the meals that I cook have to be interesting for me too because I'm the cook. Otherwise, I'm going to get really bored and I'm not going to want to do it. So I try and have your stuck. That's right, she's not stuck anymore. Um, she had been worried for a minute. Um, the meals that I cook have to have variety in them for me too as the cook. Otherwise, I would just go stir crazy because I just like simple, quick, easy, cheap, tasty, job done. Um, so using the basics. And a little bit of imagination. And if you're a new cook, and sometimes I forget that not everyone's been taught to cook and not everyone just knows. And there's lots of things that I do when I'm cooking that I do automatically without even thinking about it. They, they, it just happens because that's the way I was taught to do it. It's the way I've always done it. But someone else may not have ever been taught to do whatever it is. So, you know, means I need to explain things a bit more clearly, ask a question if you have to. Ah, oh, Karen T's in Roeville. You're not far from us, Karen T. There's some good Stud Park fruit and, fruit and veg. I've forgotten the name of it. It has some really good specials this week, um, just as a sideline. So when you've got your basics, your pantry basics, 
they form the basis of every recipe. And that means you can just go on and on and on and eat something different every day for a whole year, which, you know, if you get our new book, you may well be doing that because trust me when I say the recipes are simple, quick, easy, inexpensive and tasty. They're my recipes. They're the way I cook. So you can feed your family in a hurry. You're not going to spend hours chopping vegetables and using strange ingredients. You're not going to spend hours stirring pots and having a whole sink full of dishes to clean at the end of it because that's not my idea at all. No. Clean as I go. As soon as it's served, kitchen's clean. It's easy. So, for example... As an ingredient, one of the staples in my pantry is powdered milk. Now, apart from the fact that it can make milk for us if we run out, it makes um, condensed milk. If you have a cup of powdered milk and three quarters of a cup of water, that's the equivalent of a tin of evaporated milk. So you don't, sorry, you don't need to buy evaporated milk if you have powdered milk in the cupboard as a pantry staple and you'll save yourself a fortune. I've got the hiccups again. I must get nervous when I'm talking on here because I always get the hiccups. Okay, you can um, use uh, some flour, a little sugar, some powdered milk. That forms the basis of a pancake mix. And then you've got pancakes. You can use flour, sugar, cocoa, um, powdered milk and that's a cake mix ready to go a chocolate cake mix ready to go or leave out the cocoa put in a teaspoon of um, instant coffee and you've got a coffee cake mix ready to go you don't have to buy the cake mixes anymore because you'll have butter and eggs in the fridge you add those add the water you're right you've got your cake mix done it's easy it's quick and it's really inexpensive here, Annie's home. We were just talking about you, Annette. Happy birthday for tomorrow. Um, hello, Lorraine. Um, Barb, new book's not released yet. I'll um, be having pre-orders as soon as I get a definite release date from the publisher. Waiting, waiting. Can't wait. Okay. I would have no idea where you get bulk custard powder, Karen. Um, but seriously, if you've got corn flour and milk and an egg and some sugar and some vanilla, you don't need custard powder. Um, a basic, a really quick basic custard is milk with corn flour. Uh, when the kids were little, I always put an egg in it just for extra nutrition. I used to add an egg to their ground rice porridge when they had ground rice porridge for breakfast just gave it that little bit of extra boost but it's not strictly essential um, a dash of vanilla a little bit of sugar whisk it up and I do my custard in the microwave I cheat so I put it in the jug whisk it all up microwave it on high for one minute 30 give it another whisk microwave it again for about another minute give it a whisk and then I do it in 30 second bursts just until it's as thick as I want it to be. So I do have custard powder in the pantry, but I don't use it very often because it's just as easy when I'm doing things to make a custard from scratch. Um, I can say that Aldi has a custard powder that actually tastes nice. It's very similar to the bird's um, custard powder and I really like birds custard powder it's I think that's the one I grew up on so it's sort of what I'm used to so there um, okay Ken Parker oh happy birthday for Friday oh we've got a lot of birthdays a lot a lot of birthdays oh sorry sorry Annette I'm ahead of myself. I'm thinking today's Thursday. Don't mind me. Enjoy Friday. But have a nice day tomorrow too. Okay. Uh, uh, why don't I use custard powder? I just don't think of it. It's there. Although um, I can make up packs for of instant 
custard too that I often do for when we're going away. So they just add boiling water and stir, just like the Foster's Clark, Foster Clark, is it Foster Clark? Yeah, custard powder in the sachets works really well. Um, Karen, no, it doesn't taste better in the microwave. I'm just lazy and the microwave's there and it just means that I can keep an, I, I know it's not going to burn if I do it in the microwave where if I have it on the stove, I actually have to stand there and stir. In the microwave, I don't need to. So while it's in there for the minute, I can be doing something else. Um, yeah, so... Right, just right. Well, there we go. So powdered milk does all sorts of things. So it's a staple in our home. Um, Do you use full cream or skim milk? I have both. We have full cream and skim, mm -hmm. um, depending on the mood I'm in. Because sometimes I don't care whether we have full cream and sometimes I think oh, I'll just be a little kinder to us and use skim. Um, it goes in the hot chocolate drink mix. Um, you threw me off then. I was about to say something and now she's changed. I've lost what I was going to say. Uh, milk powder. <laughs> hmm, I don't know. It'll come back to me. So... Hello, Barb. Hi, the Barb. Oh, Meryl. Yes, we'll be absolutely freezing where you are. I'll be thinking of you. Okay, so you can see how having one ingredient when you pair it with a couple of other things replaces so many grocery items that you would normally have to buy or that you might normally buy. So it makes shopping easier because you don't have such a long list. It just makes keeping your stock rotation easier because you don't have so many things you've got to keep track of and it saves you money, saves time. It, it's a much simpler way, I think. I would much rather buy less and have, and have more, which is pretty much when you work with basics and do it yourself, that's what happens. Um, you know, another good one is our taco seasoning. Oh, yeah. Now, how easy is it to make that taco seasoning? It doesn't take, it only takes a few minutes whether you do a single packet recipe or do the bulk recipe. It still only takes a couple of minutes and it's done and it saves you a fortune because taco seasoning is around $70 a kilo. If you work out the per kilo price, it's around $70 per kilo. It costs, it's over $2 a packet to buy and they used to be 35 gram packets. They cut them back to 30 gram packets. And now some of them are down to 25 grams. So they've lost a third of their um, weight and doubled in price in the last five or six years. That's outrageous. When you can make it yourself and it's so much easier, so much fresher, nicer, and it saves your fortune. It costs about... Hmm, to do the equivalent of one packet costs between 50 and 60 cents, depending on where you buy herbs and spices. So as opposed to the over $2, so you are saving over 300%, uh, 200, 200%, 300% of the cost. It, it's outrageous, the cost of taco seasoning. And if you do my moo taco seasoning, it does tacos, it does burritos, it does fajitas, it does enchiladas. And, yes, if you want to be a traditionalist and, you know, they are all slightly different, um, the seasonings for those things, but they're all pretty much basically taco seasoning. And I'm pretty darn sure that Mexican housewives don't necessarily always go and buy a packet of it of the seasoning when they're doing their cooking i'm sure they would just whip out the three or four ingredients mix it up toss it in and be happy and i i can do that especially when it's saving me 50 dollars a kilo you know i'm more than happy to have that say that um um saving uh,
Okay, Jess, yes, we have um, instant porridge in the recipe file. So if you go to the Chief Skates Club website, into the recipe file, there's instant, um, uh, there's a few different variations of it too. And I think I posted on Facebook or maybe it's coming up, um, overnight porridge, um, which is the, my favourite way of doing it at the moment. Um, Maureen, yes, I still put the milk powder in the freezer. It comes from Aldi in foil packets and they're sealed in it goes and it just sits there until I need to put it into the canister in the pantry. Um, good for you, Annette. Now, mixers, moo mixers are so... If you, are, if you like the convenience of mixers, by all means, make them up and have them ready to go. I've been known to do dump packs for the slow cooker with the veggies and the meat and whatever seasonings when I get home from the butcher and the grain grass, chop them up, put them into the zippy bags, toss them in the freezer. Then when we need the chicken casserole or the um, beef casserole or whatever it is, into the slow cooker in the morning and I don't have to worry about it. They're just already done. They're really good too. Ah. Wow, you two must be twins. Um, all right. So we have lots of Western Australians. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Oh, how cute is that? Okay, so back to um, basic ingredients, you know. If you've got um, white flour, just plain white flour, plain flour, white flour, bread, add some baking powder to it and you can make cakes. Pikelets, scones, you can use biscuits, um, tortillas, crumpets. None. Muffins, sorry, none. none, all those things can be used, can be made with just flour. And if it's plain flour, you can use it to make gravy. Then you don't need to buy gray box anymore. And there's recipes, again, lots of recipes for different moo gravies on the website. Um, if it's plain flour and you add water to it, you've got instant paste. Who, who made flour and water paste when they were kids? We didn't have clag or anything. Clag was at school at home. We had flour and water paste. If you have little ones, it's a safe paste for them to use for their gluing. Um, best thing is it's easy to clean up if it gets spilt and it doesn't stick to clothes. Um, hello, Patricia. Hello, Kathleen from Queanbeyan. I bet it's cold where you are too. <laughs> I put the things, I freeze my dry goods to prevent weevils and then as a follow-on pantry moths. It sounds awful, but pretty much most of what we buy in the form of dry goods, so be it flour or pasta or rice or cereals, wheat bix, cornflake, whatever, um, at the supermarket, sort of, you know, there's a pretty better than fair to middling chance that it already has some form of weevil in it. And that can't be helped. They're grains and they're naturally attracted to grains. And if you don't know about it, you just eat the extra protein and be glad of it. But if you aren't that fussed about getting pantry moths in your pantry, pop all your dry goods and your dried fruits into the freezer for seven days, minimum of seven days, and before you put them out into your pantry. Okay. Um, okay. Kids um, is dairy and celiac. Okay. If you have dairy allergies, the best I can recommend is you go vegan kosher. So if you can find a kosher deli somewhere close by, and they are, they are around, you, do, you just have to look for them, but they are around, they will have the best range of dairy-free um, creams and thing, um, 
In fact, the vegan uh, kosher cream that I used to get is absolutely delicious. Um, they are a bit more expensive, but I guess you it swings and roundabouts. What you spend more on, you save by not buying the other junk sort of thing. Um, right. <laughs> Good for you, Barb. See? I made it for my kids too. Good old flour and water paste. Yeah, because I remember in, um, must have been upper primary school and we got the clag in the white sort of triangle shaped bottles with the red thing and the smell of it, it smelled so sweet. It was just gorgeous. But um, yeah, at home we had flour and water glue. Were you a clag eater, Mum? No, I wasn't a clag eater, Hannah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know that work. <laughs> oh, dear. So, hello, Mandy. Welcome. Glad you could join us. We're just waff on waffling. Okay. Um, so we've gone over just basic things, how basic ingredients can actually um, do more than one job. And one of the things in my pantry that's really important to me because space is at a premium and so is money. So cost is always a big thing with me. I want value for my money is that it has to do more than one job. So if I find a recipe and it has some obscure spice or sugar or whatever in it. If I can't find a substitute for it that I already have, then I'm not going to make that recipe because I'm not going to buy one ingredient that will do one job. That's just an absolute waste. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of space in my cupboard. It's a waste of my time. So knowing your basics and what they will do helps when you menu plan, but it helps when you make your shopping list up too. So basics in my pantry are my flowers. So I have um, plain flour and self-raising. I have wholemeal flour. I have gluten flour and I have corn flour. Now in various varying quantities because of course I don't use a lot of corn flour. So I think probably about two kilos lasts me well over a year. Um, gluten flour I go through about 20 kilos a year. Whole meal is about the same. And then the self-raising and plain is probably 15 of each, I think, depending if I'm getting to a bread baking mood and decide that we're going to, if I'm going to make all our breads, then we go through more. But usually that fad doesn't last long because it just becomes a drag for me. Um, sugar, I have white sugar, um, and that's it. Um, and oh, icing sugar. But I don't, if you want caster sugar, just whiz your white sugar in the food processor for, or a coffee grinder, if it's only a small amount in the coffee grinder, or a baby food, mooly thing. Um, use the tools you have, but just whiz it until it's fine, like caster sugar. Um, if you want brown sugar, easy. Some molasses and some white sugar. And it's a tablespoon of molasses to a cup of white sugar for light brown sugar. If the recipe calls for dark brown sugar, and it's usually older recipes that call for the dark brown sugar, it's just two tablespoons of molasses stirred into the cup of white sugar. And that, that's it. That's it. It's easy. It's really simple. Um, and you know, molasses is really nice. Sounds awful. Sounds really odd really nice in hot milk as a drink so if you warm up um, a cup of milk to drinking temperature and stir in a teaspoon of molasses it's really really nice and you'll sleep well okay mm -hmm. hi rose um what size is a flower okay i the last lot of spelt wholemeal spelt i got was 25 kilo bags. Um, the self-raising and plain white flowers come in five kilo bags. The corn flour I just buy from Aldi in the boxes 
and um, gluten flour I buy in bulk in five kilo lots. Um, so I don't shop. I don't shop like my neighbours <laughs> when it comes to to basics. I don't shop like my neighbours, but it works. It works for me. Um, rolled oats. I buy those in um, five kilo lots and store them rice i only buy white rice i used to buy um brown rice and do the soaking and then the cooking and then the and it was time consuming um and then we were at the diabetes educator oh two or three years ago three four years ago maybe and i don't even know why rice came up and he actually said, well, in terms of diabetes, white rice, brown rice, rice was rice. If we had to eat rice to eat basmati, it has the lower GI and therefore it's slightly better for diabetics. So I've swapped to the basmati and I buy it in five kilo bags um, from Hindustan or sometimes it's cheaper if it's on half price at Coles or Woolies. So you've got to know your prices. Uh, no, no, Nola, I don't use gluten-free. I use gluten flour um, that I buy. Um, we're not gluten-free, thank goodness, with all the allergies and intolerances and things that we have. Gluten isn't one of them. Touch wood. Um, okay, Rose, okay. Is it a big saving? It can be um, on the spelt flour, buying it in bulk from my um, bulk food store is about half the cost of buying it from the health food shop. I don't think supermarkets carry spelt. They might, and if they do, it's just in little things, which is far too expensive. Um, it comes down to about $5.50 a kilo for the spelt if you buy it in the 25 kilo bags. Um, the five kilos of plain or self-raising, just the white, um, works out to about 80 cents a kilo now, buying it in the five kilo bags. Um, the, um, corn flour, as I said, just comes from Aldi, so it's not very expensive at all. And the gluten flour is around $5.50 a kilo. And I use that to make schnitzels. I add a teaspoon. I always add one teaspoon to my bread when I'm making bread. Um, gluten is the protein part of the flour. So it gives your breads a bit more strength and makes them quite elastic. And you know when you're kneading the dough and you knead it and knead it and knead it so it's nice and smooth but it's still elasticy and nice and strong, that's an extra teaspoon of gluten into that mix just helps with that so that you get a nicer crumb and a better rise and it's just a better bread all round. Um, yes, Suzanne, my husband's diabetic. Um, so we see I go with him because I'm the cook because I have to be honest, I when he was first diagnosed, I was sure that it was my fault that I'd killed him, that I'd caused it and I was... I was beside myself um, and we kept a food diary for oh, about three months. We kept a food diary and um, the lady we saw, the um, first diabetes um, educator we saw, was quite impressed with it. She referred us on to the actual nutritionist and um, he was just blown away with um, how we ate because we just eat ingredients pretty much so yeah um although we do st he still has to do his finger pricks and things and i do still watch his portion sizes and i'm really strict on fats fat seems to be the the hardest thing for him to control not so much sugars added sugars and things but the fat because he does like butter and he does like cream and he loves ice cream. So we just sort of 
I keep a stricter eye on him for those things. But otherwise, he's um, he's pretty good. Um, then I have pasta. Look, it's really easy to make pasta. Cup of flour, an egg, make it into a dough, roll it out, cut it into strips. You've got spaghetti or fettuccine or whatever it is, or roll it out, cut it into squares. You've got lasagna. But it's quite fiddly if you don't want to do that. Dried pasta is is just as good and less fiddly and probably about the same price by the time you factor in a cup of flour to and an egg so the spaghetti I buy I do like to make lasagna and I do occasionally do um, the fettuccine strips but most of the time if it's just regular spaghetti I just buy it from Aldi dried fruits I always have mixed dried fruit um, and sultanas Glacé cherries and um, crystallised ginger. Now, I have the crystallised ginger because I like to eat it, um, but we also like ginger, ginger slice, ginger bread, ginger all sorts, ginger beer, all sorts of things. So I use a lot of ginger. I use a lot of glacé cherries um, and the mixed dried fruit and sultanas. Um, go into fruit cakes. They go into our granola. They grow. go into our... Um, scones, biscuits, all sorts of things, lunchbox cookies with dried fruit in them, really nice. Uh, beans and lentils, of course. So I've got kidney beans, I have soup mix, I have orange lentils, brown lentils um, to go into soups, to go um, into Mexican dishes, to become a bean salad, to make dal, all sorts of things. So those I usually buy in kilo lots just because I don't have a lot of room um, and they tend to be more things that I use this time of year because we're eating more soups and stews and casseroles and bean dips and things like that. Um, ginger is very good for you, Suzanne. If you ever are nauseous, ginger, ginger tea, crystallised ginger and just chew on it like a lolly. I eat it like a lolly. It's, it's yummy. Um, full of sugar but it's really good um, so um, ginger's really good I actually got onto ginger when I was expecting Alan and I was so sick and I, I couldn't move without throwing up sorry folks and um, Wayne's mum was visiting and she went into town to do the shopping for me because I couldn't do it and while she was there she went into the old chemist and we called we had the new chemist and the old chemist she went to the old chemist which had a much older uh, pharmacist there and he actually told her to just get me to have ginger tea and to eat the crystal ginger crystallized ginger so that's what I did and it's brilliant ginger is actually um, if you ever get travel sick car sick um, seasick anything like that Ginger will calm your tummy from that too. Okay, Rose. Oh, no, Ken. Okay, do I batch cook dinners and freeze? Okay. Well, you see, I love freezer meals. So what I do is if I'm making a pasta sauce, I quadruple the recipe because it only takes five to six minutes longer to quadruple the recipe. And then I just pack it into containers and freeze it. And so that for three weeks or three meals, three pasta meals, I don't need to make pasta sauce. Now I quadruple the recipe because of that amount of my recipe is what fits into my big wok, which is what I use to make it. Um, if I had a big one, I'd probably try and do more. <laughs> but that just means then that I can use a kilo and a half. I know I'm using a kilo and a half of... Um, mince, um, two cups of TVP, a couple of uh, two tins of tomatoes, two tins of tomato soup, um, some basil, garlic, onion, put it on, let it cook and it's done. So I quadruple it and it just gives me four nights when we've got pasta and we have pasta every week in some form whether it's spaghetti or lasagna or 
um, tortellini or whatever. It could be um, cannelloni, um, pasta bake. We have it in some form every week. So I know that I've got those meals, those pasta sauces done for four weeks. If I'm doing soup, I do the same thing. I fill the pressure cooker up. So I do the full six litres in my pressure cooker and halve it. So I've got two weekends worth of soup. Um, we have one and one, one lot, half of it goes in the freezer for the next weekend. Anything I do in the slow cooker, so whether it's um, a chicken casserole or um, a beef casserole, anything like that, I fill it up. It's going to be on anyway. It's going to be on for the same amount of time. So I may as well take advantage of that. If I'm making um, fish cakes, I batch make them. So again, I will do four tins of, I'll quadruple the recipe because we're going to have to get messy with the flour and the egg and the frying anyway. So do it once, get it over with. So in terms of batch cooking, that's how I do it. I've tried the spending a whole day cooking 30 meals and it's, it's exhausting. It's just, it's nice to know I've got 30 dinners in the freezer, but it's just exhausting. Where if I'm just going to add an extra five or 10 minutes to one meal every couple of weeks, it's not as nearly as exhausting. It's For me, that works better. Um Hi, Rose. Yes, I do have a pressure cooker. It's not my favourite appliance. I have a sort of a love-hate relationship with it. I think I prefer my slow cooker to the pressure cooker. Um, but I am getting better with using the pressure cooker. I do use it for soup. I find it very convenient if I want to do a lamb shank soup um, rather than having the soup boil on the stove for hours. It's like 35 minutes, pressure cooker, done. Um, but hmm, and I do it, use it for curries. I don't know why, it just works really well. The curry works really well in the pressure cooker. Um, I buy whatever crystallized ginger I can get when I'm buying it. It's not always available at Aldi, um, but then it's not always available at Coles or Woolworths either. So, usually comes in around October end of September, October in Aldi for the Christmas baking. So if I see it, I will buy it then. Otherwise, I'm stuck with Coles or Woolies unless I remember when I'm at Hindustan. Um, okay, sorry about that, Patricia. It might just be my froggy throat. If I have a drink, that might help. Okay. Now, what else did I have to say to you? Um, nuts, we don't, I use almonds, some walnuts and hazelnuts usually. Um, we have a peanut allergy, so we don't um, have a lot of peanuts in the house. I'm a bit, um, bit nervous with peanuts, although he is very good and he does know and he steers clear of the things that are peanutty. Um, spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, um, allspice, ginger, paprika, coriander, cumin, mixed spice, vanilla beans um, to go into my, to make vanilla extract and vanilla sugar. Um, then I have mixed herbs, basil, um, oregano, rosemary, dill, I've had no luck growing dill. I've tried and tried and I just can't grow dill. Um, I do buy dried onion for some things, garlic powder again for some things, um, and occasionally I'll get a small, I think it's about 100 grams of sage and 100 of thyme because they go quite nicely in the um, chicken stuffing when I'm doing chickens. Um, okay, Ruth. Where do I get TVP? Um, I get my TVP from the Full Pantry in Croydon. But if you search on, um, actually on the TVP video on here, I think in the show notes, I've listed a couple of other places that sell it online, um, depending on whether you want the light one, the dark one, the chunky one, the fine one. 
who knew there'd be so many varieties when it first came out. Um, so shop around for it. And if none of those suit you, if you have a health food shop nearby, if you go in and ask them, they can order it for you in larger quantities, which will bring the price down. They'll have the little packets, the 200 gram packets on their shelf, but they can order for you as a special order. They can order it in um, five kilo, I think it's 2.5 or five kilo lots. Um, so that would help. Yeah, it's expensive and it, it's expensive. TVP is expensive from Coles and Woolworths. Um, yeah, $6 for 400 grams and it's about $5 a kilo. So glad you're back, Patricia. Um, yeah, so TVP, five kilos at a time. It doesn't go off. It's really handy. It makes good meatballs makes good pasta sauce, it makes good meatloaf. Um, now, I do have different vinegars. I have white vinegar, which is obviously what we use in Miracle Spray and for cleaning and whatever. I have the brown malt vinegar that goes into my um, pickles and relish recipes, and I like balsamic. I think I'm a balsamic addict. I love balsamic vinegar. Um, at the moment, my favourite one is the thick one from Aldi. Oh, so good to die for. Now, I'm the only one. Oh, no, AJ likes it too. So there's only two of us in the household that eat it. I drizzle it over my salad a couple of times a week when I'm having a salad for lunch. And I make the best, the best potato salad with balsamic vinegar. Hello, Janice. Yes, Janice, you can get bulk um, bulk garlic powder, bulk onion powder, um, Hindustan imports, um, definitely have them in different sizes, um, starting I think at 50 grams and go upwards from there. Um, I usually get the 500 gram bags from Hindustan because that's more than, that's, that's heaps, that's a year's worth for us. So, um, yeah, yes, Rachel, it is still cheaper than mints and it is nice. And I was driving past my favourite cheap butcher today and chicken fillets have gone up to $7.99 a kilo and mints has gone up to $7.99 a kilo, which is, I think, the Coles price. So then I heard on the news that um, shock horror, Channel 7's just realised meat's going up in price. The reporter obviously doesn't cook. Um, um, it doesn't, Kathleen, TVP doesn't go off as such. It will get stale over time. So if you're not going to use it all the time, you're not going to use a lot of it, try the smaller packets. A 200-gram packet will, you know, and see how you go. If you decide you like it and it's going to become a staple ingredient in a lot of your cooking, then obviously you can buy the bigger quantity and it won't go stale. Still put it in the freezer though. Um, yes, oh, oh, caramelised onions, balsamic, brown sugar, onion, slowly, slowly, slowly. It takes ages for them to caramelise, so good. But my favourite potato salad is simply... Um, quartered potatoes i just scrub them i don't peel them scrub them quarter them steam them till they're soft and then while they're still warm or while they're steaming fry some onion slice some onion and fry it in a little olive oil and then um drain the potatoes when they're still warm mix some um get a really nice egg mayo a good mayo not a coleslaw dressing or anything a bit of mayo proper mayo and add balsamic to it to taste so i use heaps because we like it quite strong mix it through stir that through the warm potato and then put the fried onions over the top of it oh my goodness it is so good i don't i don't have a recipe with quantities for that because i just eyeball it as to you know, i'm doing six people so six potatoes sort of thing you know i just eyeball it 
oh my goodness it is so good and for a warm potato salad mwah, delicious um okay ah so right interesting tvp in the health food aisle and it's marked as new well they used to sell it all the time um coles and woolworths regularly had tvp but it did disappear for a while i had trouble getting it but i had trouble getting it anywhere um and in the end the full pantry actually special ordered it for me and now they sell it as a regular line which is what they were doing with the um gluten flour too so ah thanks maureen for victorians tasman meats have mints for 6.99 until the 3rd of june sounds like a um it's not really my stock up price but it might be a top up the freezer till we can get it cheaper price i suppose um till we can find a cheaper cut of meat and perhaps grind our own mints you have the mint grinder. i have the mint grinder i should use it yes i should thank you maureen um Sauces, we have tomato, soy, oyster sauce that we use in our stir fries. Um, I buy Master Foods barbecue when it's on half price because that's the one AJ likes. And then I'm like, I like Zush coleslaw dressing. I used to always buy Kraft coleslaw dressing and they changed the recipe and it's now revolting. Don't like it at all. So I've gone to Zush, which is really good. Um, so they're the sauces and dressings that we have. So when it comes to oils, I have olive oil that I buy in the four-litre tins. I have um, safflower that comes in just the, I think they're 750 ml bottles. So I only use, mm, don't use very much of those at all, probably two a year of those. Um, and I have a little thing of sesame oil. And I use the sesame oil in our stir fries. And I only buy a small bottle, the smallest I can get, because it does go rancid over time. But it's really strong. Sesame oil is really strong. You don't need a lot of it. So, you know, just a, a quick splash, just a few drops in a stir fry is more than enough. Um, yeah. And yeast. And I buy yeast in 500 gram packets. Um, so they're the sort of basics and then you've got just the tins that you've seen before like the tin tomato soup pineapple baked beans um, then we always have eggs I always have butter I always have hard cheese um, and in the veggie line my core veggies are pretty much everyone's core veggies I think we have potatoes carrots onions celery zucchini capsicum tomatoes lettuce cucumber they're pretty much it as the core veggies and then i round it out with the silver beet or the bok choy or the little squash the pumpkin if it's cheap enough um and we haven't grown it eggplant that sort of thing they get rounded out with whatever's cheap or whatever i can grow in the garden so it's um they're just basics but they make everything we eat they make so um maureen wants to know is my easy bread recipe in the recipe file okay for the bread maker yeah put it on the dough setting and it should be fine so it read your instruction book so you know how to layer them because believe it or not different models and even different brands vary but the different models between brand, brands vary as to how you stack the ingredients in the um tin so read your book, lay them in, put it on the dough setting, and it should be fine. Oh, thank you, Meryl. Yes, please. 49 people clicked on the thumbs up. I would be so excited. Ooh, that would be really good. Night, Barb. It was good to talk to you. Sleep well. Um, basic grocery list. Now, of course, um, I didn't buy them all at once. Nobody would. Over time, you build your pantry up. And you will get to know 
what you cook and what your family eats and you can go from there and build it up from there. Um, the freezer, I always have some beef, some chicken, some lamb and usually some fish. Um, the boys aren't big fish eaters. I like fish. Um, the boys aren't big fish eaters and Wayne never had fish growing up, never, never known fish and chips did he have growing up. So fish is just the strangest dish to him, even after 30 years of living with me. So he's not real, he eats it, um, but it's not his favourite thing. So Hannah and I tend to have fish on nights when they're having something that we don't like. Um, so if you just remember that as you're doing writing out your shopping list, and doing your shopping and you're picking up those ingredients, try to choose the ones that do at least double duty so that you're doubling the value of your money. If you can find it so it does triple duty or quadruple duty, then you're getting more bang for your buck. And yes, you will probably use more of those things over time, but you're still saving money and you won't be carrying home such a huge load from the supermarket. It, it makes a big difference to just go to ingredients. So you're a oh, huge difference. Um, and when I'm feeling well and I'm actually baking as per my usual routine, I don't even buy crackers because they're easy enough to make. So these days I do buy them because I just don't have the to do the rolling but hopefully that will come back and I can go back to rolling out crackers but there will be lots of things that you can cross off your list because you've got the ingredients to make them and you won't be spending any more time in the kitchen you won't be spending any more money but you you will be giving yourself more options as to what you can eat and how well you can eat and you'll certainly not be going for the takeaway so the $25 for pizzas or $35 for Chinese delivered or um, what did we say we could, oh we now can we now in our area can get KFC and McDonald's delivered Woohoo! Um, so you know it having ingredients but just a few ingredients, basic ingredients, change, changed my world, <laughs> really did. Just made my life so much easier and it will yours too. Um, look, we've got basic recipes in the recipe file. I put recipes in the newsletter every week. There's recipes all over the place in the blog, Facebook, they're everywhere. Just basic, simple recipes that can be adapted to suit you and the best part is if you are dairy free then swap out the dairy component for a non-dairy component if you are gluten free use the gluten free versions of the gluten containing ingredients you can it works pretty much like that and it's pretty much um just swapping things out and don't be afraid to change it I think that a lot of a lot of cooks today are so terrified of not sticking to the exact recipe that they don't actually reach their full potential as a cook because cooks don't follow recipes. By all means, take my recipe, follow it once, and then you might say, I don't, I would prefer more of this and less of that. Next time you make it, do that. And if it's really good, that's your recipe. You've made it, you've taken it and made it your own and you've got something that you like. Don't be afraid to experiment. And the worst thing that can happen is not even the dog will eat it. And I've had a couple of those, says Hannah as she's nodding her head. I've had a couple of dishes that the kids wouldn't eat, Wayne wouldn't eat, not even the dog would eat. So, um don't be afraid to experiment because you're not you're not wasting a lot of money because we're not buying expensive ingredients 
you're not going to be you know wasting fillet steak because you're saving fillet steak for a special occasion a birthday an anniversary a special celebration it's not a regular meal so you know you're not going to waste a lot of money if you don't if it doesn't work out the way you thought it would and at least then you know that you're going to stick to the recipe you're not going to swap swap it around can you freeze cottage cheese um you can but it's not very nice when it thaws you need to beat it and then you would need to use it in cooking I've got a recipe for cottage cheese rolls, like bread rolls with cottage cheese as one of the ingredients. Yeah, they're really nice and they're really quick and easy to make too. Um, so um, that's on the website. If you go to the website and in the search bar, type in cottage cheese rolls, it should pop up for you. They're really simple and easy to make. Um, um, oh, Annette, I watched your um, plans for your garden the other day absolutely really oh, be so good so excited for you um night lorraine night jewels um so yeah um oh, i'm sorry i'm just checking my notes to make sure i've covered everything because i've jumped around a bit there you go. Start small. It is time to wrap up. Start small. Start with this week's shopping list. Look at what you've got on it that's not an ingredient. See what ingredients you have that will make that and cross that thing off your list. Start small like that. Just one thing at a time. Um, and it will very soon become habit and you'll just do it. It's, it's not a... Um, it's a life-changing thing and I can tell you this this it has the reverse effect because I have a friend who often would give me packets of things like packets of um, canton sauces or um, jars of something and I'd look at them and think I don't know how to use it because I'm not used to using the packets or the jars I would have to go and search for a way to use it because I'm so used to just having the ingredients and doing it that when I was given the packets, and there's one up there at the moment I'm looking at for um, Massimum beef, and I'm like, I didn't know how to use it. I had to stop and think about, and then I followed the recipe on the back of the packet and thought that didn't look too exciting, so I added a bit to it, and it was very nice, but I had to stop and think because I'm not used to having the packets. I'm used to having the ingredients. So when you get to that stage, it's really exciting because then you can say that you are a really, re you are a real cook. And so I will pat myself on the back and say that now, because I've suddenly realised I don't know how to use packets anymore, I must be a cook. I must be what my mum was and what my aunties are. So anyway, all right, guys. Thursday night we'll do the dinner party, dinner party meal. Should be fun. That can be our Friday night dinner. Yum, yum, bubble gum. And um, stay warm if you could. We've got huge winds forecast for more than half of Victoria tomorrow, so stay out of the wind too. Hang on to, hang on to your brollies. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'll see you on Thursday night, 7.30, in the kitchen. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a pleasure. Don't forget to, before you go, thumbs up for me. That would really, really, it just it makes me happy, but it does something to YouTube, which makes me happy too, I guess. Um, and by all means, share the link to the video. Um, if you think there's someone you know that could perhaps use a couple of tips, Feel free to share the link. Happy, happy to do it. Okie dokie. Good night. Night, Maureen, Sam, Ken, Parker, Leah, Meryl. Yes, not buy things in packets at all is a really good thing. Okay, good night. I'm going now. Hannah's rolling her eyes at me. Night.